This is Artful Discourse, your weekly escape into the vibrant world of creativity, culture, and intellectual exploration. I'm your host, Benjamin Kirk, and I invite you to join me on a journey through the rich tapestry of human thought and the beating heart of artistic expression at Fresno State's College of Arts and Humanities. Good morning and welcome. Today, our guest is Thomas Witt Ellis, professor of theater and director of the upcoming University Theater production of American Sun, and Miguel Gastelum, communication specialist and box office manager for the Department of Theater and Dance. Thank you both for joining us today. Thank, Thank you. you for having us. Good to be here. All right, Thomas, I'd like to start with you, and I wanted to start out with a simple question. What do you love about theater? Oh, <laughs> that is a gotcha question. Um, you don't really choose the arts. The arts kind kind of chooses you, um, and I just kind of kind of got pulled into it at an early age as an undergrad at Sac State, and uh, I was actually a, there on a football and track scholarship, and I literally just fell into a, an acting class, and I really liked it, and. Uh, you know, I can't. I come from a performance family. My sisters sang and played the piano and trained voices. My mother was a choir director at, at my church, so uh, I had to sing all my life. Well, growing up, I didn't have a choice. So it was a natural fit going from kind of a little bit of music to theater arts. So um, it's it's a great experience. The creative process is, um, you know, just the, the same, you have the same, if you don't have the passion, you shouldn't be here, but we have the same passion as artists, as uh, physicians and lawyers and accountants. It's the same thing, only we're working in the creative, on the creative side. You are directing the University Theater production of American Sun, which is written by Prim Christopher Demos Brown, and it opens next Friday night, September 29th, and the show runs through Saturday, October 7th. Yes. So tell me a little about the play. Well, uh, the play is ripped from the headlines of America, uh, American cities. Um, an African-American teen is pulled over by the police. And I don't want to give away the plot, but he, he is, uh, things happen and he is kind of disappeared. And um, his mother, uh, who is, um, you know, highly educated, highly articulate, she comes to the police station because the, the kid hasn't come home from his date or wherever he was off uh, doing. And um, she's trying to find out, she's trying to find a file, a missing persons report, and she doesn't know that there are more grim and ominous things going on with his, uh, with his fate. Um, so that's, you know, kind of, I don't want to give away too much. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's what's going on. It's, it, it's every parent's nightmare. Right. Now, I understand this is a Fresno premiere? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So who is starring in the play? Well, um, I have a student from Fresno City College, uh, Adanda uh, Schaefer. She's uh, playing the lead. Mm -hmm. um, most of your listeners have seen the um, film version on Netflix. I don't know if I can say that, but uh, the, pl the film version is based on the play version, so we're doing the original version. Uh, Jason Archie, who comes from a prominent church family here in Fresno. Uh, he's the, um, the African-American cop. Um, James Hume is the, the other patrolman that, uh, that clashes quite a bit with the mother. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Jake Sherwood, who's one of, both James and Jake are our former students, uh, alumni from our program. And uh, Jake Sherwood is the husband. Yeah. Now you did mention the Netflix release, and that was that came out in two thousand nineteen. And for those who have seen the film yes. on, on Netflix, what makes the play unique? Well, my of course, my production is much better. <laughs> uh, all, <laughs> all due respect to Kerry Washington. Uh, well, it, you see the um, the um, live stage stage version. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, working in the theater is always in my. Um, exciting because you're seeing live bodies you're seeing actual emotions you're not seeing them translated through celluloid you're seeing real people breathing real air with real emotions um and the film uh, genre gives you some of that but you're not there you're not you can't reach out and touch that person right. so the stage 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 versions of just about any treatment 
are more exciting for the viewer because they're they're interacting with human beings, not uh, not film. It's that connection Absolutely. between the actor, that direct connection between the actor and the audience. Absolutely, and I, I grew up. Uh, I started training in African American theater, which is much like the African American church. There's a lot of lively activity. There's a call and response between the uh, the speaker and the and the audience. And viewers that come to my show, even though it's not a call and response show, you will see a lively audience. You will see audience members responding to the actors. They can't help it. Um, and that makes the experience a little bit more um, engaging, I think. In a press release, you said, and I'm going to quote you here in the press release, the current political climate of Florida is unlikely that the play like this, featuring content drawn directly from daily headlines, would be allowed at one of the state's leading colleges due to Florida's anti-woke and anti-racial, uh, anti-race theory stance. Um, so I wanted to give you an opportunity to talk a little bit more about that. Why do you think this play is I was much more caustic and much more political in my original comments. I think um, Miguel kind of uh, trimmed that down to keep me from losing my job. <laughs> but uh, no, well, specifically in Florida, the Florida state schools, the universities mm -hmm. and the colleges and the community colleges and the high schools are all of right now engaged in preventing plays like this from being seen. It's almost like Nazi Germany is, is the banning of black culture and the culture of people of color. So if you happen to live in Florida, you, this show could be staged, but only at, at some of the uh, professional theaters or um, amateur theaters, but not at one of the universities. They're just simply prevented. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the, at least in the Netflix production, the setting was Florida. It's in Florida. That's the other irony. <laughs> Floridians mm -hmm. would not be able to see a play that takes place in their own state. So we keep it in Florida, obviously, that it doesn't matter if it's Florida or California. It could easily happen here as well. But uh, the irony is that we live in a state where we don't have those kinds of bans and prohibitions as they do, as they relate to people of color mm -hmm. and as they apply to Floridians. All right. So I'd like to trans transition a little bit and talk about you. Uh, what is your background? Where did you grow up? Where did you go to college? You talked a little bit about this already. Yeah, I'm in Sacramento, born and raised. I um, educated at public schools. Uh, I came to Sac State on a football and track scholarship. I was a uh, NC All-American high hurdler in, uh, in college and ran track in high school and played football in high school and came there at Sac State. And I was very successful as a, as a local jock and uh, literally my second or third year of college, I, I just took a drama class because I needed the GE. Mm -hmm. I, didn't ex I, I thought it was going to be a basket weaving class, an easy class for jocks, didn't have to do, wouldn't have to show up, et cetera, et cetera, <laughs> et cetera. But it happened to be an African-American theater class. So I was naturally mm. more drawn to it because at that time I didn't even know that there was a theater uh, for African Americans, there were black. I, I mean, I knew a raisin in the sun, maybe, but I didn't know that there was a whole canon of material coming from that, that represented our voices. So, and it was a lot of it was uh, church related. Mm -hmm. uh, so I kind of, you know, just folded right in. Uh, my mother was a, a preacher kid, and so I was at church all the time, all the time. So I, I kind of understood that tradition in black theater that came from a black church. What makes African-American theater unique? Can you describe some of the differences? Absolutely. For the most part, unless you're dealing with playwrights like Brecht or others that, um, that really require or orchestrate uh, a communication between the audience and the uh, actors, unless you're dealing with those kinds of plays, African-American theater is uh, a communication between the actors and the audience. Of course, you could argue that all plays do that. But when you come to a black play, you see that more pronounced. Mm -hmm. um, the best analogy is, is comparing uh, a Catholic m m um, uh, afternoon mass to uh, Abyssinia Baptist Church across town where people are singing louder, singing more passionately. It's not a kind of a laid back, oh, it's not that sort of thing. It's jumping and shouting and having a, a, a good time. So that's kind of 
uh, the experience, but the literature is also different. Uh, African American playwrights really write a lot about the African American experience, um, racism, mm -hmm. uh, the legacy of racism, the legacy of uh, Jim Crow, which still permeates through our society. You know, f 60 years after Jim Crow was dismantled, we still have, we actually have a resurgence of Jim Crow uh, with voter suppression acts. Um, with uh, police policies that uh, are overuse of excessive force, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So where does your passion for acting stem from? From acting? <laughs> I was asked this question many years ago when my mom was alive, and I, I said, uh, my mother owned her own beauty shop, so I grew up in the beauty shop, literally. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times my mother would put her customers under the dryers, you know, those big, loud dryers, and, and, uh, of course, when those things come over your head, you, you can't hear anything. And she, my mother was an excellent mimic. She could impersonate anybody, <laughs> anybody. And I kind of grew up, she would impersonate our pastor, political leaders, black and white. I mean, uh, so um, I kind of, that kind of started a little something. Plus, in, in church, the... Um, we, young people were forced to do speeches and mm -hmm. little plays, so we didn't. I couldn't grow up being shot, being afraid to speak in front of people. Right. That was not going to happen in my church, so, which was a great gift because that's one thing I don't have problems with. Uh, whereas a lot of Americans do have that. That's one of the leading cause, causes for anxieties. But growing up in that church, no, you started talking to, giving giving speeches and monologues by the time you were three. So um, it, it was just a natural transition from that sort of early exposure to monologues and mm -hmm. dramas. If I hadn't had it that early, I probably wouldn't have meandered into the theater at, later in life. Right. And what about directing? Directing was just kind of um, a spinoff. I, I had, at Sac State, my mentor uh, had conferred with me and he says, you know, you've done several plays here. Have you thought about directing? And I said, yeah, I'd like to. And I started directing, and I actually mm, I maybe enjoyed that a little bit more. <laughs> uh, although, you know, there's, it just depends on the project. I, 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 like, I still do a lot of acting, but um, the thing I like about acting is that you're just kind of sort of responsible for yourself and mm -hmm. maybe helping the actors, but the director is responsible for everything. You know, heavy hangs the head that wears the crown. Yeah. And it's like that. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot of sleepless nights. And there's a lot of anxieties. But um, overall, it's a very rewarding experience. But you said you sometimes feel like you like that a little bit more? I do. Can you delve I, into that? I, I like, because why, there, why is that? Because there are more opportunities for creativity. Uh, you know, okay. I'm, I'm involved with costume design. I'm involved with lighting design, set design. Uh, there are all these different aspects of the theater experience that I, I have to kind of collaborate with and oversee. And uh, so it's not a one dimensional thing related to acting only. It's acting, it's comp theater, it's visual composition. I think you've mm -hmm. done some photograph work. Yeah. When you're framing up a photograph, it's composition. What's right. here, what's in the background, what's your depth of field? It's the same thing with the stage. You have to line up everything so it's aesthetically uh, compatible to audience taste. How did you become a professor in the theater? Did and dance department at Fresno State? Quite by accident. I, prior to coming here, I had done uh, a lot of professional stage work in Sacramento. Uh, I uh, attended grad school on a fellowship at Cornell and then uh, received my MFA in acting at Michigan State. So when I returned back to Sacramento, I was, you know, as a trained actor, I was getting a lot of work, a lot. And um, uh, I started wanting to do that full time, but I needed something else between gigs. And um, a colleague of mine gave me, a, well, arranged for me to do teach part time at the community college up there, and uh, I really enjoyed that. Uh, a position, a full time position in African American theater came up at the University of Georgia, Georgia Bulldogs. <laughs> and so I'll get to that in a second. So I um, was teaching at Georgia for three years before I came here. I saw an ad in the trade magazines that Fresno State was looking for a black theater specialist. And I thought, oh, it'd be great to get back to California. I applied, um, and the rest is history. 
That was before his day. <laughs> All right. Now I'm going to bring Miguel into the conversation here too. And w- welcome again, Miguel. I, and now I have a question for both of you actually. So don't put your mic down too quick there, Thomas. Why are acting skills important? I, I kind of wanted to get both of your responses to this one. Sure. I actually, a uh, fun fact, have my acting degree from Fresno State. So, yeah. um, and I think, you know, just having an experience in theater has been, and especially now in doing marketing work, I think has been very important. I think, like Thomas mentioned, how he's comfortable talking in front of people. I think that's a really good skill to have just in terms of being able to speak to large groups or even just communicate with people on a day-to-day basis, which honestly now post COVID and seeing some of some students seems kind of an arduous task for them. So I, I think theater really preps you and to just be a, a team player and to, to be a present human being in life. Anything to add to that, Thomas? Oh yes. Uh, I don't know if our department does this. I think it does, but I remember when, as an on, uh, undergrad at Sac State, we, um, we printed out a list of all the occupations that having a theater bachelor's would could feed into law, uh, mm-hmm. advertising, um, various other business aspects. Um, and um, actually, when I was at the, you know, the University of Georgia, they have a very renowned law school. I was the, also coaching um, lawyers, um, law students, to how to <laughs> manipulate the, uh, the jury to have them be on your side, and that's acting. That's right. all acting. So there's there's dozens and dozens dozens of applications of acting skills um, that are needed in through daily life that you can get through a bachelor's in theater arts from our program here at Fresno State. Yeah, and that's kind of what I wanted to ask too: is what kind of opportunities are available for theater majors, and what have you seen alumni of the program go on to do? Absolutely. Yeah, um, as Thomas mentioned, there's a lot of our alumni have gone into law. Um, some are doing whether it's local politics or state politics. Um, it's very popular. Uh, there's also uh, alum who have gone into other aspects of performing, like video production and film work, um, writing. I'm trying to think of people that I've gone to school. Teaching is also very uh, mm-hmm. big for our alum. Um, uh, so yeah, I think there's there's a lot of applications in other fields, a lot of things you can take from theater that you can apply in other fields, um, and yeah. All right, and McGill, I want to talk with you for a minute. First of all, what do you love about theater? Uh, I love about theater is that it's a very ephemeral art form, and that you know every performance is different, so every experience is different, and it's an art that only exists in the moment that it's being created. I think that's really cool, and I think it can be a very, um, you know, transcendent experience. I know that's a big word to say, but I think there's something about witnessing human stories, especially with shows like American Son that are topical and deal with, you know current issues that are happening and, and to be with a group of people experiencing that and, you know, and hearing people, how they respond and react to certain things that are unfolding in the play um, is, is really unique and special. And I think something that you don't get with a lot of art forms. Um, So, yeah. All right. Now every academic year, the department of theater and dance produces six main stage shows and that's five plays and one contemporary uh, dance ensemble performance. So what's coming up this year? Yeah, um, I know we talked about American Sun, which opens on September 29th and runs through October 7th. Uh, I do want to mention that the Tuesday and Wednesday night, October 3rd and 4th, respectively, performances are already sold out. So um, highly encourage people to get their tickets for that one ahead of time. Um, Thomas is, is very popular in any regard, so his, his shows tend to sell pretty well. So uh, now we're two shows down. Um, so yeah, after American Sun, we have another Fresno premiere, um, At the Wedding, a new play by Brenna Turner, and that's directed by Kathleen McKinley. And this will actually be her last uh, main stage production that she'll be directing at Fresno State. She's finishing oh. her retirement, uh, early retirement this year, and that runs October 27th through November 4th. 
Um, and that's a really fun play. It's a, a, a very queer play. Uh, it deals with a woman named Carlo who is attending her ex-girlfriend's wedding to a man. And um, it's kind of a series of vignettes. So it kind of deals with Carlo as she goes through the evening of the wedding and kind of dealing with um, people from her past and some new people that she meets at the wedding. But the overarching theme is her dealing with her love still for her ex and kind of mm-hmm. accepting that she's moved on. Um, so it's actually a very fun play. Um, uh, very lively and very um, contemporary. Um, after that, we have Seminar by Teresa Rebick and directed by Brad Myers. That one runs December 1st through 9th, 2023. Um, Teresa Rebick is a Pulitzer Prize-nominated uh, playwright, very popular play that played uh, on Broadway about 10 years ago, I want to say. And it deals with these four young writers who have hired a internationally renowned writer to give them a seminar over the course of 10 weeks to help them become better writers. Um, the show is actually very funny and very provocative and s- sexy, even, I would say, which is very weird when you <laughs> think about what the topic is. <laughs> is about writers but right. it is a very smartly written play um and that is that show is actually double cast um except for the role of leonard who's the writer they've hired to um give the seminar and that's actually played by a um, pretty popular local actor terry lewis mm-hmm. um and then that finishes off our fall semester and then we start the spring with our contemporary dance ensemble under the artistic direction of Kenneth Balint and that runs February 9th through 17th 2024 um the show I mean technically oh I did want to mention sorry backtrack seminar is also a present premiere um and then uh so with the dance concert it's always uh, new works there's usually about six um a majority of them are choreographed by uh kenneth and then as well as uh, sometimes one or two by other faculty members and then uh usually a piece or two by either a student choreographer or a guest choreographer um these are always all contemporary dances um and are always a good time as well uh, after that, in the spring, we have Sanctuary City by Martin Amajok, directed by Gina Sandy Diaz. That runs March 15th through the 23rd, 2024. Another Fresno premiere. Um, this play kind of takes takes place in uh, New Jersey in this post-9-11 world. These two immigrants um, kind of dealing with living in society as as immigrants and um one of the characters only three characters in the show and one of the characters uh, becomes naturalized and they hatch a plan with the other character to fake their marriage so that they can become naturalized as well but obviously as life gets in the way and other complications arise uh things don't go quite as planned um and then uh, finishing off our s- spring semester is the musical Spring Awakening, uh, which has music by Duncan Sheik, the famous songwriter from the 90s, and the book and lyrics by Stephen Sater, and that one's directed by J. Daniel Herring. That runs May 3rd through 11th, 2024. It's a very popular musical, won eight Tony Awards, including the best musical. And um, it is a adaptation of a play from Germany in the 1800s that was actually banned because it's uh explicit material Mm. it's uh basically young adults transition from adolescence to adulthood and kind of exploring their sexuality and uh it's a Mm. rock musical it still has the text from the 1800s german version of the play oh interesting and then uh the characters break out into rock music um it's sort of the concept of the musical is it's a um expression of their inner frustrations and 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 um anger so uh, it should be really fun it'll have a live band um and yeah it'll be a good time all right so four of the plays plus the contemporary dance are fresno premieres yeah usually all sometimes kenneth will bring back a you know a dance or two that he's done in the past but for the most part yeah all the dances are new and yeah four four premieres that's that's a lot Okay, and I know this might be a little political for you to take favorites, but I'm going to ask anyway, what production are you most looking forward to this season? Ooh, I would actually say I'm actually really looking for not just because he's sitting right next to me, but <laughs> I am looking forward to American Sun because I do remember hearing lots of great stuff about it when it was on Broadway. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm really interested to see how that plays out here and to see uh, like I mentioned earlier when you asked me what I like about theater, how the audiences respond to it because even in reading it you read lines and you're like, oh, this is totally going to get a response, you know, oh, yeah. right? and you know, and, and so it's, it, it'll be interesting to see that. And then I'm, and then I would say, secondly, just cause I'm a musical person, Spring Awakening, 
and I just really love that music. And it was a musical that came out when I was a teenager, so it, I, I have that connection to it as well. But I was, I've seen many productions of that one, and got to see the national tour as well. So American Sun will be a whole brand new experience, which is what I'm excited about. If someone wants to attend all the shows, are season tickets available? They are, and they can buy them until opening night of American Sun. Um, so we have a. Uh, yeah, like 30% off if you buy your tickets in advance. I believe it's $75 for general admission, six, don't quote me on this, I want to say 65 for like uh, faculty, staff, seniors, alum, and military, and then $50 for students. Okay, and you can find those on the FresnoState.edu website. Mm -hmm. All the information's on the website, and you can buy them online, or you can visit the box office Monday through Friday from 12 to 4 to purchase those as well. All right. Thank you, Miguel. I appreciate it. Now, Thomas, I'm going to give you the last word to plug your production of American Sun. This is the sort of play that causes um, patrons and viewers and audience members to continue to, to debate this show long after they see the show. Uh, a lot of people go out for coffee or dinner or drinks, and they're going to be debating, you know, which side are they going to be on, because it does kind of pit law enforcement against uh, civilians and that's always a very hot topic in America today. Right. All right. Thank you, Thomas and Miguel, for joining us today. And to find out more about any of the university theater productions we talked about or to purchase tickets to a show, visit calendar.fresnostate.edu. And we'll see you next week on another edition of Artful Discourse. Artful Discourse is a production of the College of Arts and Humanities at California State University, Fresno. The dean is Dr. Honora Chapman, and the associate dean is Dr. Sergio Laporta. This program is written, directed, and produced by me, Benjamin Kirk, the college's communication specialist. The theme song for Artful Discourse is Made in Voyage by Fresno State music professor Benjamin Boone from his album, Joy. More information about his music can be found at benjaminboone.com. Special thanks to KFSR and FSR Underground General Manager Julie Lindahl for making this show possible. You can learn more about the College of Arts and Humanities and find an archive of our shows at our website, cah.fresnostate.edu, or on our blog, fresnostatecah.com. <laughs>